When Andrew Luck retired just two weeks before the start of the season, many thought the Colts' playoff chance took a significant hit. But with Frank Reich at the helm, the Colts are still right on track. It starts with Reich knowing his personnel. T.Y. is a true number one, but the most talented player on this offense is clearly Big Man 56, Quentin Nelson. In fact, the entire offensive line is maybe the best in the league. Reich has capitalized on his O-line and a trio of good tight ends by using the counter as his staple play. Take this trip motion series. Here, against Tennessee, they line up in trips right, and they motion the outside guy, Jack Doyle, into the C-gap and run a counter. This allows for them to get an overload on the right side with the aim to create a large seam for Mack. Blocking is good, and Quentin Nelson double blocks creates a huge backside seam for Mack. The counter is great for getting your big, athletic offensive lineman on the move and blocking downhill. But also note the personnel. The running this out with three tight ends set, giving them an extra blocker while giving the appearance of a pass. They come back and run this play with Naheem Hines, flipping the play in the direction of the counter so they can run behind the all-pro guard. This time, Tennessee gets too narrow worried about the overload and C-gap, and Hines is able to break this for a big gain. But it's how they counter to their counter that makes Reich great. Here, against the Raiders, they're in 11 personnel rather than 13. They add a wrinkle by sending 15 across the formation and back as if it was a previous play. However, 15 continues his jet sweep and is actually the lead blocker for this play, as Mack bounces the counter to the right side and is able to pick up 19. The run play action out of it. Here, finding Ebron on a deep crosser, using the X receiver to clear out the deep third. Even when Brissett misses the read like this play action version of the play, there was still a receiver wide open. And it's using this concept molded to fit your best asset, your offensive line, that makes the Colts a real contender. Back in a more traditional 13 personnel formation, they'll run counter behind the tight ends allowing their best player Quentin Nelson to pull. Thanks to the strong down blocks by the tight ends, Nelson is allowed a one-on-one -on -one shot at the DB, which is completely unfair, flattens him, and springs Mack for a big gain. Here, you can see them run the same concept out of a twins two tight end look. Running the counter behind a pulling Nelson for a strong gain, or they'll flip the counter pull using Braden Smith, who has been excellent this season as the puller, creating another big hole. This is the other key West Coast philosophy of Reich. Keep it simple. Third and two is easier than third and 10. Now, this is no magical fact that coaches are trying to get their teams into third and short. Your odds of picking up a third and one are about 50% higher than a third and long. But it's one thing to say this in your plan, and it's another to actually do it. The Colts find themselves in third and short consistently, taking some pressure off for set. That's not to say the Colts don't throw on first down. Reich is just more than happy to throw early, he just gives his team a better chance to win by the plays he calls. When it's man, they run crossers. When it's zone, they run hitches. It obviously gets more complicated than this, and they use deep overs to attack cover three and sail concepts to pick up chunk yardage, and the aforementioned trip motion package to take deep shots downfield. But it's a testament to play design that Jacoby has so many easy reads and throws while still using traditional dropbacks and play actions. They rank 10th in third down percentage, converting 45%, just behind New Orleans, San Francisco, and Kansas City. Oh, I expect this to increase. They're also impressive 8 of 9 on 4th down. This is one of my favorite 3rd down calls. They give the ball in the jet motion on a 3rd and 1 against the Chiefs. Ballsy call. This strong play calling extends into the red zone where the creativity doesn't stop. Going back to the Twins double tight end formation, the Texans have been playing man most of the day, and here's a great design man beater. It's 2nd and 9, and the two tight ends will both run crosses as they sneak Eric Ebron who's playing in the X underneath on the drag route, creating a mess of traffic that LA would be jealous of, and allowing Brisket to find wide open on a catch and run. In pass protection, they've given up just 11 sacks all season. Reich further takes advantage of his offensive line and pass plays by having them create huge passing windows. Just check out some of the sight lines Brisket has on his receivers. Clean clean, clean. It's a minor detail, but those all count in the National Football League. Running the ball, Mack has really impressed me on tape. His natural instincts as a runner show strongly as he knows when to be patient and when to hit the gas. This touchdown run where he beats three players for the touchdown is his best of the season so far. As for the QB position, Brissett has been steady. His game against the Texans was probably his best of the season where he threw four touchdowns. He had some nice throws, including this escape act against Denver 
where he threw off Vaughn Miller before completing 35 yard pass to T.Y. Or this touchdown throw against the Chargers. But he's also missed some throws on shot plays, something that would add another dimension to this offense. With most of their games being close, we are really yet to see Brissett tested when the Colts need three touchdowns. So with one of the best play callers in football, the league's best offensive line, and the return of their monster on defense, the Colts are my favorite to win the division. If you enjoyed this, leave us a comment on who you'd like to see next in our deep dive. Click left for a drive of the week, and click right for a video on everyone's least favorite rule in football.